If it's four year route, they're going to do less and less geared towards the artist, which is going to yep. you know move them to elsewhere. But yep. and then they, they just can't decide right now. So they're saying what they're, they're doing one thing and then they're saying the other. So Daniel Lex saying we want a million artists to live off you know Spotify, but then everything they're doing right now is geared towards them investing in companies to do growing their po- podcasting and audio consumer facing side of things. I don't know if you remember, but they tried video for a while. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so they figured out that that wasn't going to work, but they tried it. Yes, but their their actions right now are contradicting their, their their mission statements. It feels like, and I think there's it's, it's a very important time coming up for the company. Yeah, hopefully a lot of it's just experimentation. Of course, some of it is market share and needing to be able to access and serve the podcast market because it is adjacent, and some of it does make sense, but. Hopefully, a lot of the other stuff is just learning, right? That R&D part of investment, not necessarily something you want to apply directly to the company as a whole. It's just all research and development budget. That's that's what the mm. hope is. Well, Stock Exchange will be pushing them to go down the, the consumer-facing route anyway. They've, they've only just turned a profit in the last quarter, haven't they, finally? And they'll be keen for them to continue on the consumer-facing expansion route rather than developing features for artists to monetize. So it's a, it's, it's a really interesting time for them to try and figure What's, it out. But. Wait, so you said their first quarter finally happened, happened when they were profitable? But I think they finally turned a profit this, you know, in Q3. So, because obviously, you know, I've known about them not having it, for, like, you know, since their inception, which isn't out the norm for these types of companies that are user-driven marketplace, having to do the chicken and the egg situation. But yeah. the fact that they've actually turned their profit now to me that actually is when it becomes dangerous in one way because now all right so you have the company and this is spotify being on the public market as as well once they start to turn a profit typically these companies get pushed in the direction where you want to continue to see profit right and you want to continue to see that pop profit grow and then you see the incentive line up like that because a lot of these companies aren't necessarily doing what's best for the company if we're on the stock market we have to speak to those people on wall street who want to see that that number go up and up so our incentive is now to do things that make the books look good versus creates a better company at long term amazon has been so great because they kind of ignore that and continue to invest in the future far longer term than other people spotify i can't say that they have you know, such a keen leadership as a Jeff Bezos, right? Those are rarer yeah. for those types of companies, especially once it starts to be the general executive board of directors type of things lead, leading the um, company. So I don't know, to me, that that can be worrisome just from the fact that making a profit sounds pos- pos- positive, but what comes after that can be against improving a great user experience and even bigger understanding the value of investing in the artist stuff that might not bring an immediate profit but will be worth it for the platform long term it's always been a problem for spotify i've never personally really known what it is i think anyone really knows like what it actually is if you were to define it as it's you know as as what the actual company is it's always been you know doing loads of different avenues like it's, it's always been really hard to describe compared to a lot of other companies in terms of the biggest on the market. Hmm. What, how do you mean? What do you mean? Well, you know, are they, obviously the music streaming platform is one avenue, but they have all the, they have the podcasting and they have the artist network and the Spotify for artists. Like it's, they do a lot of different things. Like if you were to describe the company in a nutshell, it's, it's always been, they never really know themselves. It seems like who they actually are and what they want to focus on. They always try and they always try on different avenues, experimenting with different mm. you know, roads to go down. That can be fair. I understand. I guess I actually get caught up so much, right? D- just because of what I do in the music side that mm. I just think about that part so heavily. But I mean, I do know so many people who aren't involved in music, right? That they they only use it for a podcast. I'm not that I think about it. So it's interesting to hear that outer perspective and more objective perspective of Spotify from that standpoint. I mean, that's been, that's been their biggest problem, I think. I think that's been their spots always been holding them back. They've always, you know, tried to do all these different things and never really know what to really hone in on. And that's mm. where it could be usurped in the music streaming market. Mm. 
if they're not careful. Yeah. And when you and when you've got these disruptors like TikTok coming in, you know, and then, and Bike Dance launching their own streaming platform now as well. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. So, yeah, we 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 shall see.